All right, hello, hello. Today we're going to be looking at three speech to text operators inside of LOPS. The basic setup is you're going to want a chop audio stream. Here I have an audio device in connected to my microphone, and then you're going to want to drop one of three speech to text operators, which I'll drop all three right here and then get them all hooked up to the audio channel in. With speech to text, basically, you get speech in and text out. You can see I have three speech to text operators inside of Touch Designer available here in LOPS. We have the Assembly AI operator, which is cloud based, super accurate, about 15 cents an hour, and also has very nicely formatted segments. If I turn on the output segments one here, stop talking, we'll get that long chunk. Then also QTI, speech to text. This is local, free, low latency streaming style. We get fast streaming chunks. If we go to the chunks here, they're a lot smaller based on this one second duration. If I was to shut down this, you can see we have two models available. The 1 billion is English and French with a 0.5 second delay, and the 2.6 billion is only English with a little bit longer delay, higher VRAM usage, but slightly higher quality. Let's start that up again. And then we have Whisper, which is kind of a Swiss Army knife, if you will. It has three different modes, push to talk, and you can just do file processing. And by default, it is also doing the streaming. But if we stop this and go to push to talk, also clear the transcript, and I start it here, we'll get a slightly more accurate transcript with better punctuation based on the fact that I'm transcribing the entire audio in one go. So all three of these operators have a unified parameter layout. If you go back up to the assembly operator, right here at the top, we have the streaming active. And then under that, you can copy it to your clipboard. And then we have a section where you can disconnect or connect to the API. You will have to have an internet connection and set up your account. We'll get to that in a second. But for these two local operators, there is this initialize and shutdown. It actually opens a separate worker process. When you initialize the worker process, by default, operators will just start streaming as long as an audio input is plugged in. Right underneath that initialize and shutdown section, you'll see this output segments, which controls whether or not this first out one is going to give you the full transcript. Again, I can clear it here and or the actual segments themselves. And then just under that, there are some model specific settings. So this is selecting the model and the language, as well as setting the chunk duration and the temperature. The QTI has a temperature setting, which is a bit odd, but you can dial that in and check it out. And you can see the Whisper has a bunch of different models that you can choose from. The nearer to the top, the smaller the model, um, I guess the quality drop off is there, but they'll be a little bit faster. I actually use this tiny English model for most of the times I'm using transcription, and I'm usually using the push to talk. I'll show that in a minute. And then we also have some VAD chunking, which this is with the smart VAD chunking is with the streaming mode specifically. So if I was to stop streaming and go to push to talk, you can see that stuff uh, turns off. Also file processing. This can take an audio file, several video file formats. As long as the whisper is on, you drop a file in there and hit transcript active and it will run the transcript for that full file. And then, yeah, the last thing at the bottom for all of these is this clear transcript button. Also, another thing to notice, every one of these operators have these chop channels. So if I just drag nulls out from those and might as well just get these initialized as well. And you will get nice little transcription complete signals from the chops. And this is on push to talk mode, but if we go back to stream and turn that on, we will also see the transcription complete coming in here. So like I said, this, you can see the chunks are a lot shorter for this QTI live streaming. And we are getting a lot of these transcription complete chunks. That's about like one per second. Keep that in mind. And then as you saw, this chunking for assembly is a lot longer. So you're getting almost like full, full sentences each time. You might use QTI specifically in like a real time live setting where you're trying to get as accurate as possible directly from 
a audio stream of words. Assembly AI is also like that. It's extremely accurate. Uh, one issue or one limitation is that it is cloud-based and it is paid. So depending on your setup or depending on your production, that might not be possible. But if it is, I would actually suggest using this because it doesn't run on your local hardware, which the Whisper is honestly very light, especially with the tiny model. The QTI is a 1 billion parameter model, so it is a little bit more VRAM, especially the 2.5 billion. But the assembly AI is quite good for thinking about a production quality transcription that has really nice segmentation for the segments right out of the box. Another setup that I would highly suggest for very accurate transcription is, let me turn transcription off for that one, clear the transcript down at the bottom and then go to push to talk. So this basically, like I said, will start recording and as I talk, this will record the audio and then I can turn this off, but this will have better punctuation. And let's bring another lop in that will actually control this parameter. So this is the VAD Solero, Voice Activation Detection Solero operator. And this is a pretty simple operator that just gets a audio signal in and it will give you a single chop out. It's actually this second chop output because the first chop output is just pass through of the same audio signal. So to put this in line, I'd actually suggest just for visual clarity, this is just going straight through and this will plug into the whisper operator and then we can expose this by, I just hit A there on my keyboard and we're gonna drag this channel onto the whisper operator and over the active parameter, drop it, chop reference. And now if this is loaded, it will start recording when I'm speaking and you'll get that is speaking signal. And then it, when I stop speaking, we'll get the accurate transcript coming in. So this is a good way in order to use the local stuff in a real time setting, but also get really accurate transcription with good punctuation as well. And I think that covers most of it. Um, like I said, you get these, both of these outputs per the operator. So you get the, either the full transcript or the segments, and then you also get the chops. The last one is logs. If you want to take a look at that, but you shouldn't have to, unless the operator is not working. And then please send me a message. Another thing to look at that's important. And it's probably like kind of the first thing that you want to look at is the installation slash config page. This is in each of these, the local ones are installation slash settings, but for assembly, you just have to install a couple Python dependencies. This will install via the Python manager inside of flops. So this basically you just hit install dependencies. This pop-up will come up. You don't have to do this twice. Once you do this once work, and then you'll need to hit get API key, which will open a web browser and either let you sign into your assembly account or create an account. You will have to, for the streaming API, you will have to enter a credit card or some sort of payment form in order for the streaming to work, I believe. But yeah, I think that covers the installation for assembly. And I uh, will disconnect from that. So for both of these, you should just have to hit install dependencies. And this one says that dependencies are already installed. So hit OK and that will guide you through a process and it will install across your computer, your whole computer once, and you won't have to install it again for any time that you're using LOPS in any touch designer project on that computer with the same like installation base folder. One thing that's nice to see is, oh, uh, there's a little assembly AI dashboard, but in the LOPS docs, which is at this site here, link in the description, each one of these operators has nice information and covers most of the parameters, if not all of them. And you can also go to the assembly AI website here, get a little bit more information. And if you have any questions about installation, this installation guide at the top, I have a video that I released a couple weeks ago. Really the first six minutes of this covers almost everything that you need to get going with LOPS in general. So check all this out. And oh, the last thing to note is you will have to hit this download model. And I think it's, yeah, it's down here at the bottom for QTI. 
And when you hit the download model, that will download the model that is currently selected. And it should warn or prompt you to download it if you initialize and run it. But there are a couple things that you need to do before you get these operators set up. And once they're set up, they should work across all projects. One thing to note about assembly is it is a paid API service. And I do have this estimated total cost. You'll see we went through about one cent during this tutorial. Um, it's about 15 cents an hour, and they do charge you based on when you're connected to the service. It's not based on the streaming active. So I kind of separated this per these parameters on purpose because, I mean, really, I, I was considering just having this read only. So you basically are connecting and disconnecting from the service when you want that transcription. But there is a bit of a delay, just a tiny bit. So in theory, this would allow you to connect and start streaming and then stop streaming and it won't transcribe but then you can start again and yeah but just so you know when the streaming active pulse is off it is still charging you based on when you're connected so by default i just have this linked here and i would recommend using just this connected pulse so just uh to go over it again which to choose when assembly ai is the best quality and if you don't mind the cost it's good if you have a stable internet connection and you are using this in production. QTI is awesome for local, low latency streaming. It's fast, but a little bit less accurate. And then my, my favorite is the VAD plus Whisper because I find it to be accurate and also low latency in the fact that it's not constantly chugging on the stream and it just kind of transcribes when I want it to and when I stop talking. But yeah, all of these are included in LOPS. They have a similar structure across the PARs. I hope that's helpful. And they also have both segments and the full transcript. You can check out these chops, drive events with that, and create all sorts of different logic to drive setups with text, use text in visual things, or create whatever you want. I hope it's given you some ideas. And this has gone too long, so I'm going to end it here. Thank you to all my Patreons for the support and to everyone that is giving me good feedback, both critical and just some ideas for new things to integrate as I build this system up and make it more useful for more people. Keep an eye out for more videos like this going over a small section of the LOP operators. And with that, that is all. Have a good day.